Hi, everyone, and welcome to Unicon's Canvas Partner Day webinar on how to get started with learning analytics. Uh, my name is Linda Fang, and I'm a software architect at Unicon. A little bit about me. I joined Unicon about a year ago and was most recently a senior product manager at Instructure, responsible for Canvas SIS integrations and Canvas data and analytics. Uh, I've been involved with student information systems, data integration, and learning technology interoperability standards for over 15 years now. So today we're going to share some stories and ideas for how to get started with learning analytics. Uh, I'll walk you through the components that are included with Unicon's new LA Quick Start service um, from an open analytics infrastructure that integrates data from Canvas's LMS um, into a learning record warehouse. Um, and it also uses the IMS Caliper standard. Uh, and then I'll do a demo of the, the course pulse, student pulse visualizations as well and talk you through that. Um, we're also going to talk about a strategic planning process that we offer that provides schools with a forum to identify concerns and work through challenges, both from an organizational and technical perspective. So a little bit about Unicon. So we are a education technology consulting services and support company. Uh, we have been in business for over 24 years, focused on uh, education, the in education industry. We are headquartered in Gilbert, Arizona, which is a suburb of Phoenix area. This is the different domains that we actually do work in. Uh, we are known for our work in identity and access management and integrations, but we have a lot of different disciplines. Um, and in fact, we have a lot of different types of uh, staff from engineers to UX designers, BAs and project managers, um, and we also do strategic consulting. So at Unicon, we got involved in analytics a few years ago because of our background in integrations. It turns out that one of the first steps in every analytics project is an integration project. Uh, so these are just a couple examples of projects we've worked on over the years, and I'm going to go through uh, what we've done for each of them. So for JISC, uh, JISC is an organization in the UK that has a mission to enable technology for education and research uh, in the sector uh, for those sectors over there. And one of their programs is a national learning analytics initiative. Uh, so Unicon was chosen as a provider to deliver services and open source components to support that initiative. So we delivered readiness assessment across several institutions there, worked with schools on adoption, built uh, APIs and dashboards, um, and, pr and, and implemented a predictive analytics model uh, that fed a, and as well as a student retention system. Uh, at North Carolina State, uh, we built out an analytics infrastructure at scale using AWS Hadoop clusters. Um, it runs an open predictive model that was uh, developed at Marist College, and we worked in conjunction with them to deliver that, that predictive model uh, running on, on the AWS infrastructure. That model surfaces risk scores for students um, and can actually detect the at-risk Predict it, predictions uh, within the first two weeks of a course. Other work that we've done at Notre Dame and the French Ministry uh, followed with various implementations and deployments of the open analytics components that we built out for them. So in working with uh, the various clients, we started to see some common patterns emerging around what kind of challenge they were experiencing initially. Some of the challenges are technical, but Perhaps more significant were some of the organizational through some of them, and then we're going to talk about some of the strategies that we've learned to address those challenges. So usually one of the first hurdles is how to gather the right set of stakeholders across campus. Typically, for analytics or learning analytics in particular, there isn't always one individual or department head that owns an analytics on campus. Another issue that comes up a lot is change fatigue. When there's too many changes happening at the same time or in short succession, um, it can lead to anxiety. And it's worse when staff members who have to carry out the changes aren't always the same people as those who actually are mandating the change. Something else we hear is, well, what 
what do we do with the data? Or how is this different than what we already do? Most schools already have a ton of data that they've been collecting for decades. That's not usually the problem. The real issue is where's the data located? Uh, we found data was located oftentimes in several different systems across departments, uh, sometimes inside someone's head at the school, somebody who might be the go-to person on campus for certain answers. The fact is a lot of data doesn't always equal a lot of knowledge about how to use it. What we also see are integration challenges. So gaps in the data or limited data availability. So most schools we worked with were using an average of eight to 10 different systems um, and had all different ways of collecting and interpreting that data. So something we hear that was a shared theme was that not having certain data wasn't a problem before because it wasn't required for use. So um, that's, that's something that tends to come out as, as you start to talk about what uh, you're going to want to use the data for, and then you re realize, oh, well, we don't necessarily have all the pieces of data that we need for that to answer that question. The last piece is data ownership concerns. So what we found is that, you know, there's lots of different departments in an institution that might collect data, but they don't actually own the information themselves, um, or maybe there's no clear gatekeeper that has access to that data. So this poses a problem for, you know, who owns the data that's collected, how do they gain access um, for learning analytics purposes. So with all of that, uh, what are some of the strategies to help get through those challenges? So on the challenge of what do we do with the data, so one strategy is to sit down as a team, define the purpose for the data collection, and also define the specific data points and what they, what they should look like. So what this does is it aligns the learning analytics processes and policies to the goals of the institution. So you might ask questions like, what do you mean by, what do we mean by student engagement? Is it how many times a student's logging into Canvas or is it how many times they actually physically are showing up in the classroom? So those kinds of measures need to be defined collaboratively uh, with conversations across the various groups on campus. And once you have that established, it's going to make uh, gathering that data and knowing what to do with it a lot easier. So related to the integration challenges, what we found is the best way is establish that single source of truth. So if you have one place to get to go and get the information, that's going to save you time, energy, and effort. So the goal there is to have a holistic viewpoint on what data is needed and collected over time. And you could be, you know, you could use something like a centralized data warehouse or a learning records warehouse that's linked to several systems that have that are collecting the data and feeding it all to one source. So finally, what about the organizational challenges, the stakeholder involvement and the change fatigue? That's where a, a strategic planning session that brings together the diverse constituents across campus can help. A session like this can be a good way to introduce colleagues to the goals of the project, uh, benefits of implementing the initiative. This type of session also assists with gaining buy-in from all levels at the start. It's in those planning sessions that we've seen schools working proactively, breaking up their long-term vision into manageable steps, uh, and doing it in such a way to avoid introducing more change anxiety to departments. Some schools we worked with were able to find an existing initiative to attach their learning analytics to, or they ended up creating a broader program to wrap multiple activities together. So what this does is it, it reduces the number of perceived changes across the organization, plus you get the benefit of the synergy uh, that happens between those projects. So as one example, um, an existing project that focuses on ethics and privacy policies might also include uh, policies needed to support a learning analytics initiative. So based on client feedback, 
Unicon now offers a service to help institutions get started with learning analytics, and it's called LA Quick Start. So the idea here is to provide institutions with an environment to help them get off the ground. This can evolve into a full learning analytics solution as and when you're ready. So what we do is so we have a, a variety of different things that will we'll basically work with each individual client um, to find to uh, create a process that fits their 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 situation. But typically, we'll start with a survey that we send you to do a self-assessment. Then we usually have a call to go over the questions, and then we plan for an on-site visit. And during that on-site visit, we'll talk about a lot of those challenges and work with your school to come up with the strategy to help you take the first steps forward. And as a tool to help you with those first steps, uh, we put together a basic learning analytics infrastructure for you and we connect up your Canvas data to it. So what this does is it lets you see what your data looks like and then you can start to visualize where you are and then you can use it to figure out where you wanna go. We also train your staff so everyone can get a feel for the components and how they fit together. This way your team gets more comfortable and then they can get experience under their belt uh, to start the next project or decide what to do for the next project. So a little bit more about our strategic planning uh, process. Um, and it's, as I mentioned before, it's going to be different for every client that we work with. But generally, it's a couple of days and we come on site. Um, we'll have larger scale meetings with, with multiple departments, but we'll also try to set up smaller scale meetings with like focus groups. Um, and then we also make sure that we have one-on-one -on -one in, uh, meetings uh, with individuals, particularly the leadership team at your institution. We'll also go over the technology portfolio um, and, and identify uh, who across campus will be considered the main uh, key players on, on this team. We, we've actually been working with uh, what we call readiness assessment matrix. We have several different dimensions to it. Uh, we, we actually um, worked, uh, so it turns out that Educause has an instrument that they, are, that they use as part of the Educause core data service, um, and it's an analytics maturity measurement. Um, and their survey is actually um, uh, very similar to the one that we use. So we went ahead and aligned our, our instrument with theirs uh, about a year ago. Um, and all of this work that we offer based on the work that we did primarily in the UK and we've made some additions to offer it here in the US. The end of this process, uh, we actually will, will create a report that has recommendations um, and that's also uh, combined with, uh, with a, um, a meeting where we go over the report and will um, help with planning and, and laying out a roadmap for your school. So on the technology side, this is a high level picture of the various components that are involved in the open analytics architecture. So the idea here is, you know, you gather the data from all of the various sources uh, over there on the left, and you, use, you can use standards where possible. All of that data kind of flows in to a centralized learning record warehouse. Uh, that warehouse, uh, might have activity data for all the learners, but it also has what, I'm, what we call supporting data, um, the data that's kind of needed for analytics. So you need to be able to, um, to uh, reference data like courses and users and, and person attributes and so on. Um, once you have that consistent collection point in the middle, then you can sort of serve up that data in various ways, you know, depending on what you might need it for. Um, you, might, you might be using it to, to serve a dashboard, um, in which case it's primarily a read-only kind of optimized um, query layer. Um, or you might be using that data to feed a Hadoop cluster where you're running a predictive model. Sometimes what you're doing is pulling or, or feeding data into a predictive model that then kind of turns around and uh, provides information that, that is either displayed on a dashboard um, and, and, uh, all, and maybe the dashboard is then kind of you, you use LTI to kind of put it back into your, 
LMS. So a, a view of that uh, can then be possible um, all in all in one place. And between each of these tiers, uh, usually there's uh, APIs that are needed to uh, to retrieve and and put data um, uh, flow data, I guess, from one one tier to the other. In some cases, like I said before, there, there are some standards that are now emerging. Caliber from IMS is one. There's another one called XAPI, uh, sometimes referred to as Tin Can. Um, so, so we have uh, in our learning records warehouse component um, the ability to, um, to accept both XAPI and Caliber. And then, you know, where there are where we do recognize that also there, there are certain still kind of custom processes that are going to be needed to uh, load data from from a variety of sources and also to retrieve that data and serve it out to uh, to various endpoints and so um, that's where the uh, either um, uh, custom data loader process or, or in some cases custom api work is also needed So a great first step for learning analytics is to gather up the data you already have in your LMS. Uh, that's why we developed a loader specifically for Canvas. So Canvas data uh, is um, something that comes with Canvas. Uh, so you get like a snapshot of your all the activity that's happened in Canvas every night. Um, uh, you can turn it on and, and have it available to you to, uh, for, for your Canvas instance. Um, it comes as kind of a, a set of flat files. Um, you can also optionally um, get, get it hosted in a Redshift instance. And uh, essentially that data reflects kind of a, a schema that, that essentially all, a lot of the transactional data from the Canvas LMS is represented in that, in that set of flat files. So what our process does is it essentially downloads those files um, from Canvas data and transforms the data feed from that into IMS Caliper, uh, and then proceeds to load it into the into a into our learning record warehouse. We also actually take supporting data that's that's also provided through those same Canvas data flat files, and then we load that up as well into the warehouse. And we are currently using another IMS standard called OneRoster uh, because that standard um, allows us to represent things like courses and enrollments. Um, and once you have all of that Canvas data activity in your learning record warehouse, there's a lot of possibilities for how you want to show that data in different visual ways. Uh, so I'm just going to show you one example of what we've done. So, kind of get the window over here. So this is our uh, Unicon Canvas test instance here. Um, so I have one of my courses, and here I have an LTI tool that uh, that um, has the the essentially is pulling data from the learning records warehouse. So this data is is actually demo data, uh, but but the idea here is it's a visualization of the activity of the students across the timeline of the course. So um, if you look at if you have like your your students along the uh, you know the rows here, um, and then you have uh, uh, your your course um, kind of start and end, um, you can as an instructor take a look. Through the through the uh, through this type of view, and you can start to see kind of who's active when. Now, um, again, uh, one of the things that we also did was we said, well, if there are um, anything in the course that has a due date, we can also um, plot that against the timeline of the course. So you can start to actually, you know, maybe detect some patterns about you know when students might be more active or less active. Um, again. It's not necessary. Uh, it's hard to tell from this uh, data set, but um, but this is the idea that that when you are able to kind of view into the data, um, you know, bigger bubbles mean more activity, and smaller bubbles mean less. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you imagine that you know the activity you know can kind of result in a composite score for a person across the course, the lifetime of the course. Um, you can actually start to you know plot that. You could you know you could kind of see who might be the highest ranking person on an activity score versus the lowest. Um, and then if you want to drill into a person 
um, you can start to you know look at things like what types of things have they been doing, have they do been doing you know any discussion posts or maybe not, um, you know have they been doing other activities. Um, now, just so you know, the the, um, the data that I'm showing here, uh, this these are the uh, actually caliper metric profiles allow a lot of any tool that that generates caliper can classify their activity in one of these um, kind of buckets um, but if the tool doesn't have any activity that corresponds to that uh, then you won't see anything come through so um, for example like bookmarked might not be something that you can actually do in canvas so again this data is um, is demo data, so we've loaded it with a with a variety of different things just to show you the um, the, the 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 diversity. Um, but but if you if you were looking at a real Canvas data feed, you would probably see uh, mostly views navigated to submissions um, and discussion posts, things like that. But again, just to kind of give you a sense that the data that comes out of Canvas is quite rich. You can start to track, you know, how how, where a person's navigating to, um, what pages they're looking at, how long they're spending on each page. Um, you can kind of, you know, again, look over the, um, over the course of, of time, you know, how, how active are they during specific times of the day or even day of the week. Um, and there's, there's other things that we think, you know, once you have the data, um, you, could, you, you could start to roll these things up by department, um, across courses, and, uh, and, and this is again where once you start to see your data, I think it'll be easier to have that conversation um, across campus like, oh, you know, is this what we want to see? You know, maybe we'd rather answer a different kind of question or maybe we actually want to show instructors, you know, a way to get from, from this view to um, something that they might want to look at in Canvas. Um, so there's definitely ways um, through, through the, the LTI um, Plug in as well as uh, other APIs that we can call from Canvas that we can we can get the integrations to to essentially um, look very seamless. Uh, for example, one other um, point I'll I'll just make here is that uh, for you could you could do things like if if you were looking at the view of all of the students and you had a, a way to filter. Um, down to let's say only those with you know activity less than a certain amount you could then do a message students who from here you could um, pretty easily call out to the canvas um, apis and then and then do do some sort of a uh, intervention with them um, one other thing i'll point out on this other screenshot which i didn't show in the demo which was that um, you could also show risk score if you have a predictive model that is feeding the risk score into into the lrw um, so we do have some schools that are doing that and so they're they're going to be able to see that together um, in addition the canvas you know grade is is also something that can be visible on that same view Okay, so so after we stand up the technical components, um, you know, essentially what we do is we we work with your team to sh to kind of uh, help do a, a transition. Um, we'll put together training. Um, we help you with documentation, um, and then again, like I mentioned before, um, part of that strategic planning process, kind of we come in at the end as well to work with you on coming up with a roadmap and and reviewing the recommendations that that we go through with you um, the idea here is again with uh, with this kind of basic infrastructure and an exercise that allows your team to get more comfortable it makes everyone feel uh, like they kind of know more about what they want to do next so with LA Quick Start, we, we encourage you to come talk to us about your challenges and barriers around learning analytics. Um, we, we think that we can help. We, will, uh, we like to say we will jump with you. Uh, we're here to kind of talk to you um, kind of one-on-one -on -one and work with your school to find what is the right kind of way in which you should get started that's the right fit for your school. Um, here's a, a list of resources. There's a, a number of articles that uh, that our Unicon team has been 
prolifically writing over this last year uh, based on a lot of the work that we did at JISC. So Lindsay Pineda's name is kind of all uh, listed here, um, and, and she is one of our uh, key team members. The link also at the top there is for uh, the services that we provide around learning analytics. Um, there's also a link here for the Educause core data service that they do, which is kind of a, that benchmarking service to measure the progress on, on strategic initiatives of which uh, analytics is just one of them. And then JISC actually has an onboarding guide and a checklist that they provide to schools who want to do kind of this onboarding, the idea of you know, getting started themselves with learning analytics. So it might be useful um, to kind of take a look at that and see what uh, steps might be involved there. Well, thank you all for joining today, and we hope you have a clearer understanding of how to get started with learning analytics at your institution. Just feel free to contact us with any questions. Uh, my contact information is there. Um, you can also visit our website, which is www.unicon.net. Uh, that's important to note, it's .net, to learn more about LA Quick Start and any other additional services that we offer.